Okay, so I ripped apart half of my finished zoo. But why did I do this? Do you want to find that out? Well, if so, then stick with me. It's going to be a huge change to Yosemite Valley, but it's gonna be worth it, trust me. So let's get things started. All right, welcome everyone to Yosemite Valley Season Wetlands, episode one, if you will. Um, this is going to be a fantastic new start, uh, restart for uh, the wetlands area or the tropical dome area in Planet Zeus uh, Yosemite Valley. Um, I'm gonna call it Planet Zeus Yosemite Valley because it's it, it just became such a huge series uh, for the entire game, at least for me, um, that I think, you know, that's the naming scheme uh, I, I can go with. Anyways, um, today we are going to build um, a huge overhaul to the orangutan habitat. So for those of you who've been following this series um, along, um, they will potentially know around episode, I don't know, 30, 40, I have no idea exactly where we were, but um, around the time where all the tropical animals um, have been added, uh, I think it was around the time where the capuchin monkey has made its way into the game, uh, we installed these tropical domes into uh, Yosemite. Valley. And um, after a while, they were completely hidden in the forest again. Um, they, they have been pr pretty prominent at the beginning, um, but then they just kind of submerged into the foresty areas of this park. But um, since this all grew very organically, the, the overall um, pathfinding of the zoo became a, more and more of an issue, uh, simply because you had to go through the entire dome, and then you have to pass through um, the panther valley, and then you get all the way around until the, um, I think it was the grizzly bear area, and you had to pass through all these areas, but you had never had a chance to come back into the m middle of the zoo area, and this had to be fixed, and also um, this entire area had to be fixed. We used to have the camel habitat over here, but honestly though, it was pretty boring. Like, for once it did fit the theme, because it was a very natural habitat that was like pretty much just your Yosemite Valley area and then just put a habitat in, um, that's about it. But I wanted to make this more like a zoo area and now the decision was made to make this a huge uh, interspecies habitat with a lot of animals living in here. So we've got four different species living together in one habitat. Even though I'm not exactly wrong, uh, I'm not exactly sure if I will keep one of them. Um, and this is where you guys come into play. You got to tell me if you want to keep it or not. But at this point in time, we've got the orangutan, we've got the small clawed otter, we've got the Malayan tapir, and the binturong. Now, I'm not super sure about the Binturong, to be honest, um, mainly because the Binturong does go together with the Orangutan and the Malayan uh, Tapir, it's never meant to be going together with the Otter, so I'm not exactly sure if they do get along well. Um, the other two do get along well exactly with the Otter as well, um, so it, it kind of works, and from the area where they live, they potentially have to get together, but I'm not sure if you would do that in a zoo. Um, I like the idea a lot because um, the problem about the tapir and the binturong is that they always used to live only in, in a pair of two and then potentially with babies while the other two have a larger group of specimens in there. So that is um, that is a very interesting uh, thing. But uh, speaking of this huge habitat, I also needed to do some uh, rework here of this area. So what you can see over here is um, I'm placing I'm placing a little bridge over the uh, habitat segment that leads into the outdoor area. And the idea about this is that I was trying to be clever with the space given. Simply because the Binturong, the Otter and the Malayan Tapir have a way smaller traversable area need than the Orangutan, um, I decided to make use of the ability of them to climb versus the ability of the otter and the Malayan tapir to go through water um, in order to ma manage uh, the, the traversable area better. So now we have a situation in which the otter and the tapir can cross over all the water volumes and, you know, for the otter specifically, even dive in that, um, while the orangutan is um, uh, meant to be climbing over these things. So in fact, um, this climbable little bridge section, what you see me do in the last couple minutes, is in fact the only way for the orangutan to go in and out. It's going to be changed because of reasons, um, which were, well, the reversible area doesn't work for those. This, 
tunnel has to be humongous, you know, humongous in order to make them go through. So I, at, at some point, and you will see that later in the video, I stopped recording and I sat down and it took me about an hour and a half to find a design that I was still okay with, but then does not also uh, cause too many issues with the climbing and at this point it's only the females that potentially can go through and the male can't go through but i you know at some point i was like okay i have to die one death at, at the end of the day um because the, in in order to make the male orangutan go through this kind of tunnel system it, it would have it, it's almost like a second dome honestly it's that humongous and i'm at a point where i wish that frontier could loosen their conservative approach to the traversable area a little bit. Like, I know why they do certain things over others, but oh, come on, it's really annoying at this point. Like, barely any animal has a good traversable area in this game where I would say, yeah, that's okay, I can really live with that. Nearly every animal in relation to its size um, shows significant problems when it comes to building realistic habitats. Like, you have to build things like twice or even three times bigger than they would be in real life in order to make them path through. And that is something, with all glitching aside, I just wish they could be a tad bit more aggressive on this and just make them go through pieces if needed in order to find their way through because oh boy um it, yeah it just kind of breaks the illusion to me a little bit too much if i need to build everything like so much bigger than it, it actually would need to be um I'm, I'm quite happy with how it turned out here in the end it looks like kind of a bit loose it looks like a bit of a design choice how i made this now um but yeah honestly speaking um, it, it's the best I could do with the given with the given limitations and I wanted to at least make them walk through I mean I could have just gone in as I do way too often and say you know what it's just like it's a game let's leave it the way it is but at a certain point I'm like you know it, it should be playable as well and if I go back to this park in a couple months or even in a year or two and hopefully the systems are more capable and we could run the zoo on a higher performance that again that's secretly a little bit of a plan I have um, then I want Want to be able to enjoy the zoo with the animals doing what they should do but yeah who am i to talk about that i really do hope at the end of the day frontier is constantly improving that and finds a way to make that a better uh, op option um in a way anyways let's speak a bit of the design i um i kind of uh, took a lot of pieces that have been used already across this park because again it should be organically integrated in what we have and realistically the zoo would reuse certain designs all over to make maintain certain uh, style and I didn't want to go in and make this like crazily Asian themed over here because our theme going on is Yosemite Valley theme with a couple of small adjustments to certain areas but the, the main the main focus should be the Yosemite Valley vibe and this is what I wanted to maintain in here this is also why I didn't go with the foliage um, of the given animals so yeah um, that's it Anyways, I really hope you guys enjoy this video so far. At this point, I'm gonna clink myself out. I'll link myself out uh, because uh, I've got no time. <laughs> and uh, there's a couple of minutes left here for the speed build. Um, so you can see the final result in this uh, in the uh, real-time part better. Anyways, I'm gonna explain how it's going on and what we're going to change in the future. But I'm really excited to bring you more of this revamp because I really think um, it is badly needed. And there's a lot more to do in this season. I'm assuming... Uh, Probably we are going to have like 10-ish episodes on the wetland season for Yosemite. So look forward to that and I hope you guys enjoyed that. Stick with me in a couple of minutes. I'm back with you for the real-time part. Until then, enjoy the time-lapse.
And here we are in the real-time part, and you can't really see that much because, well, there are a lot of people right in front of us, but we are just going to go around the corner here to have a better view of this brand new area. So you can see um, a huge change has happened uh, in case you haven't watched the speed build, what have you been doing? But um, yeah, this is our brand new look towards the uh, domes, um, which is, you know, they, they are the tropical domes, but they're more likely going to be like wetlands tropical domes in that kind of sense um, and we have this gigantic new habitat over here in front of us so we've got the little river otters the uh, small clawed otters i should say um, living down here in the water they have quite a huge space for them available we've got the binturong roaming around here as well uh, enjoying its time we do also have uh, the orangutans, of course. Uh, they have a good time as well. They can spend their time outside or indoors. Um, and then we've got also the Malayan tapir running around somewhere. Let me just check that. There is one in the shallow waters over there. Look at that. Um, and the habitat, as I said, in the speed build is by far done. Uh, it's There's a lot to do, but I'm just going to really show you what has changed. So we've got the capybara here on the left-hand side. You've potentially seen that one in the last episode. Um, I think it also still works pretty fine with that one enjoying its uh, proper little bath here in the midst of uh, this wonderful habitat. And if we go further around the corner, you can tell that there is a lot uh, going on over here because people want to see all the new animals. I just figured that in this game there seems to be really a high news value. As soon as something is new, um, they really love uh, to be there, but then after a while it just kind of, you know, merges out and just kind of um, becomes a bit more normal as it was with the capybara. Can you not point the finger into my side? Um, but yeah, so if we go around that corner here, and you can see this uh, a brilliant new bridge in which the orangutans can cross over, but of course the Binturong can use that as well um, to go inside and outside. My god, it's so crowded from the people over here. And we've also got a little underwater viewing, which is uh, just a placeholder at the moment, uh, because that's going to be a lot better in the future. Um, I really do hope at some point the tapir is going to be able to dive as well, because legit it is the capybara diving, so we could see that in the future hopefully as well. Um, and then again, you can see there's nothing done quite yet here from the ground. I just put the, the cobble in as a placeholder. We've got to do some planting, some groundwork, some rock work and all that kind of stuff um, has to be done uh, because at the moment it's not like really what it should be. Um, but this, you know, oh my God, this has been already so much work. You can't even imagine uh, because it's really, really hard uh, to build in certain areas here because of the lag. And then again, um, I really need to make my mind up uh, what exactly I want to do and if we go further into this area my god it's so crowded here uh, we've still got the wonderful inside view to this area um, this one is going to be enlarged significantly um, and then we've got the bridge which we can't even see because it's so crowded but this is the bridge where you can cross over there's like a little glimpse here inside of uh, or like not inside but this is like where the animals can traverse into the outside area which then is to this side you can see the orangutan being there and then uh, we cross over and can go back around here with a little bit of a different view to this side um, and this is just around the corner and you can see the malayan type here being over here and that was also the idea um, because the orangutans oh my god uh, can't get over uh, simply because and there's the water in the in, in between um, and obviously the otters can roam around everywhere but the idea was to make it like different zones um, so this is the Malayan tapir zone I'm going to put all the enrichment items for them over here um, this one is going to be the zone for everyone and the inside is more like for the orangutan also been too long uh, to do some climbing and stuff but yeah so I think it's time to jump out of uh, the explore mode and go into the overview mode so I can show you the new area a bit better in game and and I think for that sake, we can pause the game to have better FPS. There you go, smooth as it goes. Um, it is a lot more open now, but I feel this is a lot better. Now you are welcomed with a bigger plaza here. It's not like super small anymore. And the overall um, pathfinding makes a lot more sense because now you can have uh, the right hand side and you go around here and you still have some views into the Bintongrang area really nicely and then you can cross over here into that section if you want to. This bridge section is going to be uh, themed completely. Um, we're going to make these um, buildings all closed off so that there's a bit more backstage area, at least some imaginary stuff and then we've got all that kind of uh, huge area here being a um, 
a big complex, like a very big backstage complex, which we have to still make sure that you can't really tell. We're going to work a lot with like natural walls and stuff like that. Um, and then we are crossing back into the area here where the Jaguar is. Um, and I'm also looking into the clouded leopard um, at some point. I'm not exactly sure how, <laughs> I think half of the people that are in the zoo are just over here because the rest of the zoo is like completely empty and everyone, ev like, wait a second, like legit everyone is over there, what is going on? <laughs> like every single soul in that zoo seems to be just in that corner. My god, this is, uh, yeah, perfectly, perfectly fine, perfectly accurate. But yeah, again, as I said, um, after a while they will all spread out and things will be will be better again. But I think for the moment being, um, I'm very happy. Um, just as I said, um, I will first of all uh, finish up this habitat and then we're gonna have a lot more trees in here. So it's going to be a lot more foresty, uh, just as everywhere in the zoo. Um, it's a lot too open at, at the moment but because of the shadows and stuff because they really annoy me while building um, I'm just putting down other stuff first um, and then the next episode oh, oh my god there has to be a huge overhaul of uh, this area in specific um, and then I have to see what I can squeeze in and leave out and whatnot um, it's gonna be a huge challenge but uh, we're gonna see about that so I hope you guys enjoyed this big revamp um, I certainly did enjoy that a lot and I hope to see you in the next one as well have a good time thank you so much for your ongoing support as always and um yeah just make sure to to leave a like if you did enjoy the video and also subscribe to the channel if you haven't already um yeah have a good time stay safe everyone and i talk to you in the next one